some 10 million years ago, a primate ate a rotting fruit off the forest floor, altered the genomes of every ape and human that came after, and unlocked our body's ability to consume fermented foods. From lush rainforests to the subtropical valleys of Asia, people have found ways to harness the work of invisible biocultures to transform the exotic fruits of their land into an extraordinary variety of flavors. South Korea, a land of big, bold, and seasonal flavors. But at its core, Korean cuisine almost always begins with something fermented. Something like the sweet and spicy sauce that coats everything from tteokbokki to fried chicken to the grains of rice in a bibimbap. Gochujang. Two hundred and fifty kilometers south of Seoul lies Chola Province, the warmest place on the entire peninsula, with temperatures hitting twenty-eight to thirty degrees Celsius. The mild climate and bountiful rainfall here is perfect for growing strawberries. Ko Min Kyung is looking for the end of season fruits. They're the ones that haven't been picked because they were too small to be sold. Ripened over an entire season, they're incredibly sweet. Instead of throwing them away, the Ko family began using them in gochujang. This is the family's jung-making headquarters. Guardians of hundreds of sauces, fermenting away in earthen pots called ongi. Some made from traditional recipes that have remained unchanged, while others, like strawberry gochujang, are modern twists. In a traditional wood-fired cauldron, the water from shike, a sweet fermented rice drink, acts as a base. Add the blended strawberries and slowly cook the mixture into a syrup. The basic method for making regular gochujang has been the same since the days of the Chosun kings. It begins with steaming up some glutinous rice. 이게 한국 전통 시루예요. 이거 보시면 온기로 만든 건데 밑에 구멍이 뚫려 있어서 솥 위에다가 이렇게 걸어서 밑에다가 물을 넣고 쌀이나 떡을 넣고 찌는 기구예요. The complex carbohydrates in the rice are broken down into simpler sugars. This is the food of microbes. A fermented soybean powder is the starter that kicks off fermentation. Made from soybeans and glutinous rice, it contains naturally occurring bacteria and fungi from the local environment, which makes their gochujang taste unlike anywhere else. A splash of her family's 360-year-old soy sauce 
which brings its own set of microbes. Then it's up to the microbes to work their magic. This unique landscape is a natural wonder of the Philippines. Carved by wind and water, and covered in vegetation that turns brown in the dry season. They're fondly called the Chocolate Hills. At the foot of the hills, farmers grow a plant essential to the making of this namesake delicacy. Cacao, also known as the food of the gods, only grows 20 degrees north and south of the equator, putting the Philippines right in the cacao sweet spot. Bohol has a 300-year-long history of cacao farming and chocolate making. The Bohol Chocolate Farm works with independent farmers to boost the island's production, calling their chocolate confectionery Tree to Treats. A raw cacao bean is bitter and slightly acidic and has no way of turning into delicious chocolate without fermentation. What ferments are not the cacao beans themselves, but rather the juicy white pulp or baba around them. Farmers pile beans and pulp together. Top them with a layer of banana leaves that carry natural yeast and cover the box to lock in heat. In this anaerobic or oxygen deficient environment, fermentation begins. In a week's time, microorganisms would have consumed simple sugars in the pulp and produced carbon dioxide, ethanol, and compounds responsible for those floral and fruity notes in chocolate. In the Philippines, wild fermentation is turning raw cacao beans into delicious chocolate. sapud ka pamagi nga ma ibalo na to nga work yun ang fermentation pinagi sa pagkat na to sa beans na siya pag makita na to nga na siya ay uh, chocolate fluid to aras kilid yung gawas so meaning uh, nag work ang atong fermentation Next, moisture is drawn out of the beans. Once dried, you can finally smell the aroma of chocolate. Totally dry na siya. May bala na itong uga na siya sa pag 
Ana talaga nato, so dala siya sa business nga sound. Para may ilan nato nga sure good dala siya sa 7.5% ang yang moisture sa kugahon. Pag pamina nato ana, dala siya cracking sound. Dala siya, no? Dala siya cracking sound, dala siya. Roasting the cacao beans is the first step of chocolate production. At 120 and 140 degrees Celsius, amino acids react with reducing sugars to produce that unmistakable chocolatey aroma. The heat also kills off any contaminants. Throw the beans into this contraption to crack them, splitting the shells from the nibs. Grinding them releases the oils and fats, and you'll get a paste that can be formed into discs. The locals call them tablea. In Bohol, tablea are often combined with water or milk. Rolling with a wooden stick releases the cacao butter and produces a creamy froth that coats your mouth with every sip. No afternoon snack is complete without the creamy chocolate drink called sequate. The satisfying beverage that lifts one's spirits at the end of a long day's work. In South Korea, the glutinous rice, which has fermented for four days, is ready to be turned into strawberry gochujang. In goes the sun-dried Korean red chili peppers, called gochugaru, that imparts its signature smoky spice to the sauce. A touch of barley syrup for sweetness. And finally, the strawberry syrup. The concoction will sit in their ongis for around six months, giving the microbes ample time to turn sugars into alcohol and soy proteins into amino acids. The pot's porous walls emit carbon dioxide to a level favorable to these useful bacteria. It takes two seasons for a vat of strawberry gochujang to fully mature. Crimson, thick and bursting with flavor. Its spiciness has been tempered by the mellow sweetness of strawberries. And more importantly... Zayo. <laughs> a new flavor is born by blending traditional wisdom with innovation. In Seoul, the dreamy taste of strawberry gochujang has inspired Australian chef Joseph Lidgerwood to create a dish that features the flavors of the forest. Some of its raw ingredients come straight from the woods in the outskirts of the city. 
and are somewhat unexpected. Known for showcasing traditional Korean ingredients in a new light, strawberry gochujang is one of the chef's favorite ingredients. Together with locally sourced plums, the strawberry gochujang is blended into a syrup, smeared into a thin layer over a smooth surface, and 24 to 48 hours later, at room temperature, the pectin in the plums would help it set into a slice of fruit leather. I'm just going to brush it with the Kisundo Dalgi Gochujang. That nice spice is going to go really well. With the Dalgi in that, or with the strawberries, it makes it a lot more softer. Sometimes when you eat raw Gochujang, it can be quite strong, especially the back of the mouth. With the Dalgi Gochujang, it's less intense. In a course menu like this, it's hard to just, especially with this snack, you don't really want to kill the palate, and you still want to offer some nice spice to it. And the final touch, his catch of the day. The dense jungles of Sabah in northern Borneo is a paradise of tropical fruits. April to August is the best season for jackfruit, locally known as nanka. The largest fruit in the world, it can grow up to a meter in length and weigh up to 22 kilograms. They are commercially cultivated in Malaysia to the tune of 30,000 tons a year. The fibrous texture of unripe jackfruit makes it a great substitute for meat. But just as the global plant-based movement is catching on to jackfruit, indigenous tribes have been cooking with it for centuries. The Kadazan Dusun is the largest ethnic group in Sabah, masters of turning wild fruits and vegetables into delicious delicacies. On Sundays, the entire village comes together for lunch. So Madam Joyli, the village elder, is making a crowd favorite, Nanka Nonsom. Carefully removing its spiky armor, wiping off the sticky sap, to reveal its white flesh underneath, rich in sugar and proteins. Boiling softens the flesh and allows it to better combine with the other ingredients. The term nonsom refers to a method for fermenting meat, fish, and vegetables. It's simple, yet takes practice to achieve perfection. Taro stalks, torch ginger, and spring onions are used here to enhance flavor. But the core ingredient is cooked rice. The Kadazan Dusun are the rice cultivators of Sabah, and the grain holds a special place in their culture and cuisine. Here, it provides sugars for lactic acid bacteria to feed on. Under the right salt and moisture concentration, fermentation takes place. A 
A lactic ferment is one of the oldest and most well-known forms of food processing amongst native people in Malaysia. It extends the shelf life of fruits and vegetables and improves their nutritional and antioxidant properties. Packed into airtight containers, the Nangka Nonsom sits out at room temperature. Two days later, its texture has softened and the fruit has taken on a sour taste because of the lactic acid produced during fermentation. A taste that makes the mouth water, one that the Kadazan Dusuns love. Sauteing the nonsum with local spices and aromatics enhances its flavor. It can serve as a side dish to fish or meat, or be eaten as a main with steamed rice. Postnatal mothers consume a fair bit of this dish to help stimulate breast milk. The crisp, salty and tangy Nanka Nonsom is brought to the table along with the other dishes prepared by the rest of the village. The community comes together to fill their bellies with food and their hearts with song, living out the old wisdom of the Kadazan Dusun. Celebrate the present. Everything else will be taken care of. Thank you.